What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today we're coming in with a banger of a video, a true hoot and a holler. In today's video, we're talking about the Perk 30 quest, the ultimate mission to acquire perks, and it was kind of a sad one, actually, but we'll get into that in a little bit because... First off, drop a like if you enjoy, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure that you go subscribe to my podcast channel, The Gobcast, which will be linked in the description and comment section, because tomorrow... I interview OG internet legend Shoe Nice, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, and I'm not gonna lie, he doesn't like me anymore after this interview, so uh, enjoy the show. Also... My testing kits drop a week from today, on October 8th, ladies and gentlemen. My test kits become available. Any substance you have can be tested. We have every reagent under the sun, and we're going to have a chat bot on the website that will tell you the results of any test kit and substance combination completely free, no purchase necessary. A free resource for all of you substance consumers to use and enjoy. Because most importantly, I want you all to be safe. So make sure you follow me on Twitter or Instagram for more information on that. Those test kits are in collaboration with Bunk Police. And if you know what they're all about, then you know this is the real deal. Without further ado, let's dive right into the video. So this one happened a while ago now, and it's kind of weird to say that because this took place in 2020. And I don't know what it is, maybe it's COVID, but like... Time's just been flying ever since then. It's weird, you know? In my brain, it feels like this was really recent, but sitting down and talking about it, I realized that this is four and a half going on five years ago at this point, which is just kind of nuts to think about. But either way, on this particular day, I had traveled back up north, closer to Chicago, back to the Burbs, to kick it with some of my homies and also tend to some of my legal issues. At this point in my life, honestly... Probably all of 2020 and a good chunk of 2021 uh, was spent driving on my suspended license back up north to take care of my pending court cases. Uh, so this day was a pretty normal one for me. You know, I, I was very used to it at this point. But while I was up north, I would always try to link up with my friends and catch as many people as I could because I didn't really get a good chance to see everybody. I lived three hours south of my hometown. Most of my friends were either broke or lived even further away from my hometown than I did and weren't able to make it to me. And it was just a very rare occasion that I got to see most of the people that I grew up with. So whenever I had the chance... I always took advantage of it, and I found myself linking up with a lot of random people and hitting up a lot of people that honestly I normally wouldn't hit up to hang out just because it was my one time that I could hang out with them. And the entire rest of the month, I was going to be back south and, you know, kind of doing fuck all but getting a high at the crib. Now, I'm going to be honest, as this was almost five years ago now, I don't remember who hit who up or how we ended up deciding that we were going to hang out on this day. But at one point or another, uh, I got in contact with Paul. And Paul is someone who I haven't talked about recently in my videos. I haven't talked about him in a very long time because I haven't really hung out with this guy since this day. And prior to this day, I hadn't even hung out with this guy since probably, I mean... 2017 2016 so i mean it had been years since i'd seen this dude but somehow we got in contact and we decided that we were gonna link up and it was one of those days where i remember it felt like it was a homie reunion like you ever have that one homie you haven't talked to in a long time you know you kind of missed him maybe thought about him every now and then like damn hope he's doing well you know hope the homie's doing good but then like you finally link up and it's like oh damn like they're different now you know, it's it's a little, it's strange now. Things have changed. There's something in the air. You know, this guy, I mean, when I met him the first time, you know, he was really up to no good. And now we're hanging out again and he found God and he won't jack off and he fucking, oh my God, dude. Listen, it's tough. You know what isn't tough, though, is getting a free bag of gummies from the homies over at Five. And this isn't your normal bag of gummies, because these contain 100 milligrams of green goodness, 10 in each gummy. All you gotta do is check out the info below and live in the United States to claim your free bag of Five Green Goodness gummies with three different awesome flavors to suit any time of day. With a perfect dose providing a nice kit completely free, how could you say no? 
check them out and shout out to my friends at five. Now let's get back to the video. But either way, I ended up going and hopping in my whip and I picked up Paul and that's how excited I was. Listen, I was not the kind of person who was going to be driving around in my hometown and picking people up at this point. My car did not have plates that belonged to it. The car was not registered to me. Uh, I did not have a valid driver's license and the car was not insured. So I don't know if I could have possibly been committing any more crimes in that vehicle outside of maybe having a body in the trunk. So I hopped in my whip and I went and I scooped Paul and I picked him up from this apartment complex and at this time anyone that was living on their own was still doing pretty well for themselves. Like, so when I went to pick him up I was like, damn, alright, like this isn't where I remember Paul living at, like... All right, bro, good for you. And I had brought my loadout with me. You know, this is still peak degeneracy era. This is really when my drug use went from being fun and social to just kind of depressing. So I had all my loot. I had my weed. I had my blow with me. I had the goodies at this point. And I went... And I had picked up Paul, and he came out with his girlfriend. He didn't tell me that he was going to be with his girl. He didn't tell me he was going to be with anybody. Uh, but he came out with his girlfriend. And I was a little taken aback. I was like, all right, so I'm third wheeling. Like, okay, you know, we can figure that out. That's fine. You know, you could have given me a heads up at least. I mean, maybe I could have gotten an escort. You know, to, that would have been a little little double date. I don't know, a little tag team. Some, who knows? Either way, a little two man. Either way. So Paul comes and hops in my car, and it's really not like we were planning to do anything crazy. We were just catching up, and luckily, I was staying at a hotel, specifically the fabled Red Roof Inn, because it was really the best bang for your buck that I could get. Every now and then, my mom would let me stay at her house when I'd come up to visit, but it was definitely not common. It was not common. I'm not going to say it was super rare, but it was not common. And honestly, I preferred the hotel room because I could smoke blunts inside, and at mom's house, I can't do that. So I scoop Paul and his shorty, and we ride back to my hotel room. And listen, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I genuinely have lost count of how many times I stayed at this particular red roof. I mean, it wasn't even like... It wasn't even the nicest or the best bang for your buck option. I certainly could have found cheaper and nicer. I could have found a way better value. But I don't know what it was. You know, the prostitutes and pimps in adjacent rooms and the drug dealers on the floors above and below and the police patrolling the parking lot every night. It just kind of felt like home. So we pull back up to the red roof, and luckily it's still broad daylight. It's still light enough where nothing's really going down. It's very peaceful at the red roof inn, you know, this, this manor, this estate that I lived at. So we pull back up, we head to my room, you know, and immediately we're getting to it. You know, I figure, hey, maybe we're going to do a little blow, probably going to roll up, definitely going to roll up, because as soon as we got in there, I sat down, and I started rolling up, and we're chilling out, and Paul does something that catches me way off guard. He asks if he can use my bathroom, and I'm like, sure. And that didn't catch me off guard. I'm like, all right, you know, of course. Yeah, I got a bathroom. Go ahead and use that shit. But he goes in there, and I hear some a little bit of scuffling around. It's not like I was listening super clearly, but he's in the bathroom, and I'm chatting with his girlfriend in the meantime, just kind of getting to know her. I'd never met this chick before. I'm, I'm giving her the, hey, you know, how'd you guys meet? Where are you from? How old are you? What do you do? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Shorty's unemployed. Uh, she looks strung out. Uh, she wasn't very friendly. Uh, she would answer the questions, but then, like, not say anything. Like, she wouldn't ask back. You know, there was no question in return. She didn't give a fuck about me, all right? It was like, oh, yeah, I'm from here. And then just silence, you know? It's like, oh, all right. Okay, shorty, just tell me I'm not shit. Just go ahead, look me dead in my eyes and tell me I'm worthless. So Paul's in the bathroom, and I hear a little bit of scuffling, but noticeably, I, what I really picked up on is like, this motherfucker didn't flush the toilet or anything, you know? He didn't, like, it was so quiet, it was so awkward between me and his girl that I was picking up on these things. And I remember I was like, he came back out of the bathroom, and he was just visibly a little different. You know, it, it was all of it. It was the way, the, you know, his posture, the speed at which he turned his body was just not right. And he didn't wash his hands. He just walked out of the bathroom and he came back over to us. So immediately, I'm just kind of looking at Paul and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you barbarian? Like, did you just fucking shit in my toilet and not wash your hands or flush it? Like, what is, what is wrong with you? You know, I didn't go up and check, but in my head, I'm thinking that. You know, and I, I didn't confront him because also I'm like, maybe I'm wrong. 
Who knows? He like maybe he had to zip his fly. You know, I wasn't looking at his crotch. I couldn't tell you if that's what he needed to do. So I was giving him the pass here, but in my head I'm just like something's weird. Like he's just acting a little different. And he was quiet when he came out of the bathroom. He was really quiet. And after he came out, he handed this little fucking thing to his girl. It was like it was like a fanny pack. It was Do you remember when you were in school and you had those little zip-up bags that you would keep all your pencils in, specifically in like elementary school? It was one of those, but a little smaller, you know? It was like not quite the width of a pencil or the length of a pencil. It was a little smaller. He pulls out this little baggie and he hands it to his girl. And now Shorty goes to the bathroom. And notice that I haven't even given Shorty a name in this story, okay? Normally, I'll at least say she's Ashley or something. But today, I don't like this woman so much that we're just calling her Shorty Johnson, all right? I don't really care. She doesn't get a better name here. Shorty Johnson it is. SJ, all right? So, either way, Shorty Johnson gets up and she goes to the bathroom with this bag. And now I'm like, okay, bro. Like, what the fuck? fuck is happening here you know so i ask him i'm like yo like what are you guys doing right now and he's like oh like we're just smoking and i'm like what do you mean like what are you talking about you're just smoking we can smoke in here and i tell him that because I, I at first i still thought he meant weed like i was being really naive looking back at it i should have known instantly but this was my friend mind you this was someone that i grew up i went to school with so i'm sitting here and i'm looking at this motherfucker and i'm like dude what are you talking about? Like, I know for a fact you specifically have smoked blunts in this red roof, this exact red roof location, probably more times than I can count on my fingers. Like, all of my friends had. Everybody knew that this is the red roof to go hard at. So this guy doesn't have to sneak off to the bathroom and blow it in the fan. I'm like, what are you talking about? You're smoking. And he tells me, he's like, oh, foil. And he's kind of beating around the bush at first. I'm like, yo, like, why is he not telling me what drug he's doing? You know, like, why would he not just say, like, oh, I'm smoking this. You want some or offer it to me or some shit. Instead, he's just being stealthy and passing the bag to his girl and trying to beat around the bush when I ask about it. And I just knew that something wasn't correct. You know, so something was not right. So I asked his ass again. I'm like, yo, what do you mean? Like, what are you smoking in there? And he's like, oh, just fucking blues. And at this point in my life, I had only known a handful of people that had graduated to doing anything beyond popping the occasional hydro, morphine, or maybe an oxy if they got lucky, you know? That was the, the extent that anyone in my friend group really went to with any opiates. So to have Paul, someone who I spent my high school years taking acid with and, and taking shrooms, or not shrooms, but taking acid, you know, and he would take shrooms and, you know, just fucking around and doing all sorts of drugs and getting lit and, you know, seeing a different side of them where the person that I knew, you know, the Paul that I knew would never do that shit, bro. He'd probably call you a junkie for smoking that shit. And now he's going to my bathroom at the red roof and ripping fucking perks off the foil and hiding it from me. I was so, I couldn't even hide my disappointment. I said to him, I remember I was just like, yo, like how long have you been doing this? I immediately just started asking him the whole scoop about it. And I was so disappointed. And you know, it was the kind of thing where like, Paul and I weren't close enough for me to really, like, be like, all right, Paul, you know, I'm, I'm going to change your life right now, like, and start crying about it and be like, Paul, we got to save you right now. Like, where's your mother's house? I didn't know him well enough for any of that, you know? He was just the kind of guy who, like, he was always at the sesh. He was always, you know, tripping with us. He was a guy who I'd linked up with, you know, many, many times and a guy who I was fond of growing up and, you know, my whole friend group he was a part of. And, you know, now he's here and as our friend group kind of fragmented as I got older and our drug use kind of evolved, you know, there's really three paths that all my friends took. Uh, it was either they went sober and, and got a job and hit the real world. Um, they kept just kind of doing casual drug use, you know, trying to be a functional user and, and maybe maintaining a moderate job, you know, but not really living too well. Or they just completely crashed the fuck out. They just completely lost it. And unfortunately for Paul, um, that's where he went. That's the path that he ended up taking, you know? And this was the last day that I ever saw Paul. This was the last day that I ever spoke to him. You know, I still had contact with him vaguely, and I still had him added on Snapchat up until I got banned this year. 
Uh, I still would see his stories that he'd post sparingly. Um, and Paul was not doing well, you know? So this day just always stuck with me. And it's something that, like, I knew I wanted to share on the channel kind of as, like, a warning, you know, just to share my experience. Like, damn, you know, this shit really does escalate. Everyone thinks when they're younger in high school, they're always like, oh, yeah, my drug use is, this is what it's going to be. I'm just going to stop. You know, as soon as I'm out of high school, I'm going to stop. Um, that's what all of my friends said, and not all of my friends were able to pull that one off, you know, myself included. So, I mean, th this is my kind of experience with that. But either way, you know, I'm talking to Paul about it, and I'm asking him, I'm like, dude, like, how long have you been doing this shit? And he tells me, oh, you know about a year, this and that, I mean, he, he kind of didn't really want to talk about it, like, I asked him, how'd you start, like, why even, and he was just beating around the bush, he's like, oh, I don't know, it's, it's fun, bro, you know, you could tell that he clearly didn't really want to tell me why this was actually going on, and to be fair, I can't make the dude, we weren't really close enough for him to tell me, like I mentioned earlier, so I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, damn, bro, like, I'm sitting here rolling a blunt, thinking like maybe we're going to go get some McDonald's and you're smoking Fent in my bathroom. You know, like there's just, there's no way. And mind you, this was like almost five years ago, but even five years ago, Fent was still everywhere. It's specifically the perks. The perks were always Fent. I mean, even before Fent was a widely nationally known epidemic, the perks that you were getting off the street were still always fucking fan since they started making the fake fucking perks okay listen i mean maybe not since they started but i mean dude they've been longer like the fake Fent perks have been around far longer than they just started selling Fent straight up, you know? The fake Fent perks are what made people actually want just the regular Fent. Uh and unfortunately, you know, my boy Paul just didn't uh he didn't heed the warnings, you know? He didn't do so well. So he was smoking this shit, and I remember, we I finished rolling this blunt that I was rolling up. His girl came out of the bathroom, and I didn't even say anything. I didn't try to stop him. I didn't try to be like, yo, like, don't do that. Honestly, I mean, I, I thought it was kind of real that at least they went to the bathroom. I was like, okay, well, I mean, at least they, they didn't just blow the smoke in my face. Like, I fuck with that. But it's tough for me because, like... You know, I've always been a drug user. I've always been around drug addicts. You know, I've, I've seen people smoke perks. I've seen people snort heroin. I've seen people do all sorts of crazy shit. I've seen people shoot up. You know, it's it's gross. I look away, but like I've been around people, I think is the better term. I've never looked at it, but like I've been around people doing it. I always look away. I fucking hate needles. But either way, you know, I've been around this kind of stuff and I don't judge but I do judge my friends for it because I know them. I'll never judge a random person for being a drug addict or, or choosing to consume a, a certain drug. But when it's people that I grew up with and it's my friends and it's people that I know their circumstance, I 100% do judge them. Um, and I was judging hard as fuck, I admit. You know, and maybe I shouldn't have at the time. But it was just, I, I felt this almost anger going through me. Where I was like, wow, like I don't even want to be around Paul right now. Like, I don't even want to fucking kick it with this dude right now. He's so, like, he was just acting so different. The way he was talking to me, he couldn't really, like, make much of a conversation. You know, when I was asking him these questions, I couldn't tell if he wasn't answering me very well because he didn't want to talk about it or if he, because he was fucked up or both. And it was just, it was just shitty. You know, when I first picked him up, I could tell that it was early enough in the day where, like, he must not have smoked yet or, like, gotten high or I don't know what he'd done that morning, but he got my car full of energy, you know? And it, it seemed like it was just the Paul that I knew with, like, some kind of weird chick who didn't say much to me, which I could put up with. I've known a lot of homies who dated weird girls in my day, so I got no problem with that. But this shit was just sad, you know? This shit was just sad. So we leave my hotel... You know, we finally, we rolled this blunt, and I'm like, all right, you know, let's let's go s fucking smoke this shit. Let's go take a walk for a little bit. And I just wanted to get some fresh air, you know? I wanted to take a little stroll outside of the room, because honestly, I didn't want the perky fumes, all right? I didn't want to be in this this freshly hot-boxed Fent box, okay? Uh, so I was like, all right, you know, Paul and Shorty Johnson, let's, let's go smoke this one outside. So we walk outside, and we hop in my car, you know, because listen, the Red Roof parking lot's not really the kind of place you, you take a stroll, you know? I mean, as much as I wanted to, this is not the kind of place to take a stroll. So we hop back in my car, turn the whip on, and, you know, we, we take a... a a short drive, you know, a car stroll, we're looping around, like, the neighboring hotel parking lot, you know, there was, like, these two adjacent parking lots 
different hotels. One was Red Roof. The other one, I, I don't think I'm going to say, honestly. You don't need to know which exact Red Roof I was staying at. But either way... Um, you know, we're kind of just going through these two hotel parking lots real slow, stopping every now and then, just smoking up. And finally, Paul says to me, he's like, yo, like, could you actually drop me at my homies real quick? Like, no, like, I just got to stop there real quick. I'll run back out. And I'm like, yeah, no problem, dude. You know, I got you. And I'm thinking, thank God, you know, this is my out. You know, I'm going to go to his homie's house and then I'm just going to say that, like, I got to go do some shit and I'm going to get the fuck up out of there. I'm going to dip, you know? So I, I'm like, bet, tell me where you want to go. Give me an addy. And he throws me an address that's like fucking 20 minutes away. And I'm like, all right, man, you know, listen, in the Midwest, 20 minutes is a solid drive. You know, 20 minutes, like, there's not a lot of traffic, you know, in, in the suburbs. So, like, 20 minutes is a, is a kind of a mission. You got to really justify why the fuck I'm driving 20 minutes to get to your shit. Uh, but Paul was my good friend, and I kind of wanted to get him out of my hair at this point, and I felt bad. So, and I, I, I just, I was a wave of emotions. I was like, all right, dude. Tell me where the fuck I'm taking you. So we hop in my car. We go to this address. Shorty Johnson sitting in the back seat doing Shorty Johnson shit. Just not saying anything. And we pull up to this other apartment complex that was a few towns over. And I'd never really been in this area before. I think it was like, where the fuck was this shit? It was like West Chicago. I mean, I probably shouldn't. And I'm talking like the town West Chicago. Not like... The west side of Chicago. Like, there's a town in the suburbs called West Chicago. But it's not a part of Chicago. Uh, that is where we were at this point. And, I mean, I've never seen Paul again or been here again. So, I don't think anyone cares if I say what town this took place in. But, either way, I drove Paul's ass there. And we get there, and I'm figuring I'm going to have to go inside and meet some of his other friends. And I'm hoping, like, damn, maybe, you know... Paul's the bad one, like his other friends are more like me, and we can have an intervention in this bitch right now. But when we get there, Paul tells me to wait in the whip. He's like, yo, I'm just going to run up real quick, like, just wait in the car. And I'm like, god fucking damn it, dude, you know? So him and his girl both jump out of my whip, they fucking run into this building, and I sit there for maybe five minutes. I mean, probably not even. And I don't know what it was in my head, but I was just like, yo, I'm going to fucking dip. Like, I'm not going to wait for this. Something clicked in my head where I realized, like, wait, he's probably buying more of that shit right now. You know? I mean, what other reason is he running into an apartment 20 minutes away, but I have to wait in the car? Um, and, like, obviously, I don't think you would make me run there that urgently if it was just to buy weed because I fucking had weed. You know? And, like, I don't, I don't know what other drugs he was doing at this point in his life. It, I don't know. But either way, I didn't really want to wait for him, you know? And I was kind of – I was just – I was sad, I was pissed off, and I was like, fuck this shit, dude, I'm out of here, you know? So I turned my fucking, I turned my car back into drive, you know, shift the gear, pulled the fuck up out of that parking lot. I remember I messaged him on Snapchat. Uh, I said something along the lines of like, yo, like, I gotta go, man, emergency. And then I just never opened his reply. I never opened it. I never saw what he said. I remember he, he replied to me. I remember I got like a couple replies from him. And I was even debating on blocking him, but I didn't do it because I was like, fuck, you know, I mean, that would kind of suck. Like, I don't want to block the guy. I want to never speak to him again. But I just I had no idea. You know, I, I had moved south and like already before I moved, I hadn't seen him. And now that I'd come back up and seen him, you know, it was just he was so different. Like, this was clearly not the homie I remembered. And to this day, myself and none of my homies that I'm still in touch with have, have spoken to him in years. Uh, I couldn't tell you where he's at. My guess is not good, but I couldn't fucking tell you. Um, I mean, I, I hope it's good, but realistically, he's probably still smoking that same shit, if not worse, today. I mean, definitely worse. Definitely worse, no question. So, I don't know, man. This is one of those videos that, like, it's not a fun story. Now that we're at the end of it, I feel like I'm just kind of rambling because I'm starting to get, you know, my emotions are getting involved. I'm starting to get a little little agitated, a little upset thinking about this one. But moral of the story here, I guess, for you guys, I mean, fuck, y'all. Keep an eye on your homies. Don't let them smoke Fent. And uh, get them stoned more often. That's uh, that's what I wish I would have done. But either way, hey, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you guys maybe learned something today. Drop a like if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to my podcast channel because we're cooking, baby. We're uploading tomorrow. Hey, I'll see you on the next one. Deuces.